Hello, this is Professor Keen. Welcome back to my lectures on space, time, and motion, where we are looking at Galileo's dialogues concerning two new sciences. We're on his second new science. Remember, the first was the strength of materials. The second is projectile motion. So specifically, we're looking at chapter 11 in A Student's Guide to the Great Physics Texts, volume 2. This is from Conic Sections to Projectile Motion. We've spent some time over the last few lectures talking about Galileo's theory of projectile motion and Galileo fielding complaints about his theory of projectile motion. Now, instead of taking a purely theoretical approach, let's go ahead and do an example problem. So I'm going to work through a problem where one uses projectile motion Galileo's theory of projectile motion in order to calculate the range of a projectile, the speed of a projectile, and so on. So here we go. Suppose that we consider a projectile that is launched from a horizontal surface. This is launched by a, by a cannon, and let's suppose that the projectile, I'll draw the projectile when it's launched from a cannon, and right away when it's launched, it has a velocity that is at an angle like this. So that's its initial velocity or its initial speed. And uh, let's suppose that this can be considered as the sum of two motions. That is, it has a horizontal component to its speed. That's the part of the speed that's horizontal. Let's call that V sub H. And let's suppose that that is 30 meters per second. And there is a vertical component to this velocity. We'll call that V sub V, and that is 20 meters per second. So it is a diagonal shot of this cannonball, but one can conceptually at least break this into two components, a vertical velocity and a horizontal velocity. Now here's the first question that I'd like to ask. What is the time of flight? That is, how long it is, is it in the air? That's the first question. Uh, I'll just write out what the questions are going to be. The second one is what is the range of the projectile? So during its time of flight, it's going to cover some distance. How far does it travel when it strikes the ground? How horizontally far has it traveled? And third, I'm going to ask what is the speed of the projectile at the moment of impact? When it strikes the ground, what is its speed? Okay, so let's, how, let's approach how do we answer these questions. And what's going to be important is to realize right away that we are considering, just as Galileo did, the case where there is no drag and no curvature of the Earth. So those are essential uh, features of the problem that we're working through here. Those are, in fact, oversimplifications, but nonetheless, it makes the problem fairly straightforward to solve, and that's the approach that Galileo took. We can always add in complications later, and when dealing with real-world problems, one actually needs to. So this is a bit of an oversimplification. Keep that in mind. So first of all, the time of flight. I'll write T-O-F, the time of flight. How do we determine this? Well, the idea is that only the vertical component of the speed determines how long it's in the air. The fact that it's moving horizontally in no way affects its vertical motion. So one can consider this in the same way that one would consider a ball that is tossed upward, straight upward, with a speed of 20 meters per second. Now, how would one consider a situation like that? Well, if it's tossed up at a speed of 20 meters per second, and the acceleration of gravity is downward at 10 meters per second per second, one can figure out how many seconds it takes to get to the peak of its flight, and then how many seconds it takes to get back down to the ground. So if we were to make a plot, this might make it easier to think about it this way, the velocity, the vertical velocity as a function of time, it starts out at a speed of 20 meters per second. And after one second, it goes down to 10 meters per second. And after two seconds, it will have a speed of zero meters per second. So this is what its velocity is doing. So after one second, after two seconds, it's lost all of its vertical velocity. I'll go ahead and put these markings here, 10 and 20. So that would be the point that it's at the apex or the peak of its flight. And notice that it takes two seconds to lose all of that vertical velocity. That implies that it's going to also take another two seconds to get back down to the ground because it's symmetric going up and going down. So after 
three seconds, then it will be going downward at a speed of negative 10 meters per second. And after four seconds, which would be the time of flight, it's going downward at negative 20 meters per second. If you're not convinced as to why it's in the air for four seconds, you might think about the area under this triangle represents the distance it goes on the way up, and then on the way down, it must cover the exact same distance, and that would be the area that is in this triangle right here. So this area corresponds to the distance it falls, and this area corresponds to the distance that it rises. So in other words, it takes two seconds to get to the peak, two more seconds to get to the ground, and so the time of flight is four seconds. Okay, that's pretty straightforward to solve that problem. Now, the second problem is asking what is the range of this horizontal, of this projectile. And the key idea here is the fact that it's going up and down doesn't in any way affect its horizontal motion. Its horizontal speed remains uniform according to this theory. So the horizontal distance it travels, maybe I'll call that the x distance, x, is just going to be equal to the horizontal speed that it has the entire time times the time of flight, how long it is in the air before it hits the ground. Well, that's pretty straightforward to do. You just take your 30 meters per second, that's the horizontal speed, and you multiply by the time of flight, which we just found was four seconds, and so we find that the horizontal distance that it travels is 120 meters. That would be the range of this projectile, 120 meters. That's the horizontal distance that it travels in four seconds. Don't be confused. That's not the total distance it travels. That's not the distance along the arc. That's strictly the x-directed distance, the horizontal distance that it travels while it's in the air. Okay, what about part three of this problem? What is the speed that it has upon impact? Well, I'm going to draw a picture here. And notice that when it's flying upward it's losing speed, when it's flying back downward it's gaining speed, and so just before it hits the ground it has the exact same speed that it had when it was launched. So there's a downward vertical velocity, so the vertical velocity at the moment it hits the ground is still going to be 20 meters per second, but it's going to be a downward velocity. And what about the horizontal speed? Well that didn't change according to our theory, so the horizontal speed is going to be 30 meters per second still. Now, how do we figure out what its total speed is? Well, the total speed, one can use the Pythagorean theorem, albeit a modified version of it, dealing with velocities, not distances or lengths. But one can find the total speed by using the, the total speed, the velocity, is equal to the horizontal speed, 30 meters per second, squared. That's the length of that side of the triangle, plus the vertical speed, 20 meters per second, squared and take the square root of that. How do we do that? Well, we can just, let's just work that out. Velocity is a square root of 30 squared would be 900. I'm going to drop the units. It'd be meters squared per second squared. And then when you take that out of the square root, you get meters per second. So I'm just going to deal with the numbers to make it easier. 900. And then what is 20 squared? Well, that's 400. So that's the square root of 1300. Okay, what do we do with that? Well, it's the square root of 13 times the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10, so I guess we don't get a nice, neat number, but 10 root 13 meters per second. That would be the speed that it has at the moment it hits the ground. It's comprised of a horizontal speed and a vertical speed compound, compounded. And also, notice that that, that, is the, that is the exact same speed that it had at the moment that it was launched. Okay, why don't we stop there and we'll continue with another problem next time.